Hi everyone, welcome back to High School Science 101. Today I realized that I haven't done any videos on microscopes before, even though they're such a key piece of equipment in the science lab. So today I'm going to talk you through two of the main microscopes that we use in the lab, which is the compound microscope and the stereo microscope. And then I'm going to show you both of them in action using some of the really interesting specimens that I've got here. Let's get started. Okay, so these are the two main microscopes that your lab in your school will often have. We've got a compound microscope, also called a monocular microscope because it has one eyepiece. And then we have a stereo microscope, also called a binocular microscope because it has two eyepieces. A key feature of the compound microscope is that it has these objective lenses that you can switch between. So we have the weakest one, which is four times magnification. We have 10 times magnification and 40 times magnification is our strongest. But the total magnification of this microscope is the objective lens multiplied by the ocular lens in the eyepiece, which is 10 times magnification. So in this case, we've got our 40 times magnification objective lens, and we multiply that by the 10 times that's built into the eyepiece here in the ocular lens. So 10 times 40, in this case, would give us 400 times magnification. The stereo microscopes don't often allow for you to change that level of magnification. It's often just the 10 times that's built into the ocular lens in the eyepiece. Another key difference between these two microscopes is the fact that this part is called the stage and the stage is where you place your specimen, which is the thing that you want to look at. In this case with the compound microscope, there is only a few millimeter gap between the stage and the bottom of this lens. The, the specimen can't touch that lens or it could damage it or scratch it. So whenever you're looking at something with the compound microscope, it has to be very, very small or it has to be a very thin slice of something to pass between the stage and that lens. Whereas over here on the stereo microscope, you can see that there's quite a large gap between the stage and your lens. So this allows you to look at much larger items with the stereo microscope compared to the compound microscope. Both microscopes benefit from having a lot of light shining onto your specimen. However, with a compound microscope, we have a lamp down here, which is underneath the stage. And when I turn that lamp on, it shines a light that actually passes through the bottom of the stage and shines through your specimen. And you can't generally see your specimen unless this light is on, or you might have a mirror that directs light up through the stage and through your specimen that you're looking at. Whereas with a stereo microscope, often you can still see the object without an additional light. But in this case, we do have a lamp that makes it a lot easier to see. Another really important feature that you need to know when you're using microscopes are these knobs or dials. The larger one is called the coarse focus knob. And as you can see, by rotating this, the whole stage is moving up and down. And when you're looking through the eyepiece and looking at your specimen, as you're moving this large coarse focus knob, the specimen will come into focus. And when it starts to come into focus, then you can switch to the much smaller knob called the fine focus knob. And this allows you to get a much sharper image. And it, wrote, it just moves the stage in much smaller increments. This particular stereo microscope only has one coarse focus knob. It doesn't have a fine focus. So as I rotate this one, you'll notice that instead of the stage moving up and down, this whole section that you look through moves up and down. And that allows you to focus on what you're looking at. So that's a really brief overview of the main differences between our two main microscopes that we use in the lab. We've got our compound microscope or monocular microscope because it only has one eyepiece. We have multiple objective lenses that we can switch between. We have a lamp or a mirror that shines light up through the stage and through our specimen. And the specimen has to be really thin or really, really small. And we also have, in this case, two types of knobs. We have a coarse focus and a fine focus knob. With our stereo microscope, it's a binocular microscope, so it has two eyepieces and we can fit a much larger specimen with this particular type because of the larger gap between our stage and our objective lens. 
Now let's look at some examples of some of the sorts of specimens you might look at with a compound microscope compared to a stereo microscope.
That's it for today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about the two main microscopes that we use in the lab, as well as how to use them and the main parts and differences between them. But hopefully this video has also inspired you to want to use a microscope to learn a little bit more about this amazing, fascinating microscopic world that exists all around us. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.